Welcome to Impact Makers Radio, featuring industry thought leaders sharing problem-solving insights to help grow your business and live the life you love. And here's your host, Stuart Andrew Alexander. Hello and welcome along to another show with yours truly, Stuart Andrew Alexander. And today I'm very excited about the guest that we have. It's going to be something that I'm sure you're going to enjoy. So without any further ado, I'm just going to quickly introduce our guest and get him to jump onto the microphone so that we can hear all of the great stuff that he has to share with us today. Today's guest is called Jeff Knott. And Jeff is a best-selling author of the healthcare book, Navigating the Healthcare Maze. He is also chairman and CEO of Tintagel Holdings, LLC, focused on global hospitality, healthcare, design, and customer retail advisement. Jeff has vast experience in creating business models centered on core business competencies such as marketing, advertising, and sales. In 1995, Jeff became Senior Vice President of International Rooms to Go Corporation and President of Rooms to Go Japan, where he led it to become the leading furniture retailer and was instrumental in its successful joint venture with Aeon, a Japanese $75 billion company. Jeff's career was decorated with multiple awards and achievements dating as far back as 1974 to 1994 with the Johnson & Johnson Corporation, where he was responsible for 120 countries, which led to consolidation in regional affiliated companies. Additionally, Jeff has been recognized in David Irvine's book, The Authentic Leader, as an authentic global entrepreneur, as well as being the proud recipient of the U.S. President's Award for Exporting Excellence on two separate occasions. Wow, I could go on and on, but there are simply too many accolades to mention. So with that said, let's all sit back, relax, and listen to what our esteemed guest, Jeff Knotts, has to share with us today. Hey, Jeff. Are you, are you uh, out there? <laughs> okay. Sure. Right now, we're living in Tampa, Florida, and have done for quite a few years. I came over to the United States. I was born in Eastleigh, between Southampton and Winchester. Uh, I was a graduate of Rutherford University, and I'm very proud of that. And had the opportunity, due to sport, to come to the United States, and I say, I got a, test, a taste of the... Uh, spring vacations in Florida, and I said, this is it. I'm staying here. I don't like the bad weather anymore. So <laughs> uh, so that, that's what happened. So here I am today in hot, humid, sunny Florida, and I'm glad to be with you. Well, we're so glad to have you on the show as well, Jeff, but could you just expand a little bit more so that our listeners can just get to know you a little bit more Share a little bit about your your story. I mean, how did you how did you get started? What inspired you to to do what you actually do today? I uh, went along for an interview one day at um, a pharmaceutical uh, group, and it turned out to be Johnson Johnson. And this uh, regional manager threw a cigarette lighter in front of me and said, "Sell that to me." In fact, they're still doing it in Johnson Johnson these days for interviews. Sell that to me. And I don't know why, but we have some innate abilities we don't realize we have. And I wish everybody would have an opportunity to exercise all those abilities. A lot of them say they dormant under your armpit or in your stomach, but don't come forward. But I just asked ask, ask the question, what do you expect in a cigarette lighter? What do you want? Perfect answer. Well, I want this, that, and the other. It's got a light. It's got to be small. It's got to be good value. So I said, if I could show you all these features in this cigarette lighter, will you buy it? I said, well, let me think about it. And I don't know why it happened that way, but the next thing I find, I got the job. And then I found that I enjoyed sales is where most people start. And then they found out I was making too much money, so they moved you into management. So I moved into management, and I actually have visited 120 countries. I counted them one day on the plane when I was bored. And with that came uh, culture, learning culture from many, many countries, 
my mind came very open to observing things that others maybe have not had the opportunity to sharpen. And I would say that was the beginning of things. And then from there, things seem to have been uh, going on and helping and blessing me with opportunities. And I've always tried to grab opportunities that uh, intrigue me, uh, not necessarily for money, but I want to explore, develop my own personal life. And with that, I've been very fortunate. No, no, I mean, that's a fantastic answer. I was just asking a little bit about your backstory, and it's led into what you actually do and a specific problem that you solve, which is the, the next yeah. question yeah. for you. So you know, you've visited 120 countries. You mm-hmm. you um, had this natural knack for sales. You love sales. You love communicating. You're obviously a very observant person. And if anybody out there checks out your profile online, they will see you have accolades as long as you know as long as your arm however today um what is it that you specifically want to talk about what for, yes. for listeners for listeners out there jeff mm-hmm. what's the one specific problem that you solve for them what is it that you do and i don't <laughs> think you've actually said the name of your company at the moment so if you just like to say who your company well, is what problem do you solve well tintagel holdings LLC, Tintagel is a, a little um, place on the north coast of Cornwall. I called it that because of the roughness and ruggedness of where King Arthur had his uh, mythical castle. But anyhow, what I found is an important subject today is effective communication between two people, survival skills. And I'll give you, let me go through that. The first question is, why did I get out of bed this morning? I mean, there must be a purpose for why I got out of bed this morning. And I've got to be able to communicate with somebody or something. We communicate with our dog, our cat, uh, whatever. Uh, and But do we do it effectively? Do we really, really effectively communicate? And what I've found is that here in the United States, there's a, there's a phrase called elevator pitch. Elevator pitch. Just before you move forward, can you just clarify for our listeners what that elevator pitch is? Just in case Absolutely, okay. yes. No, elevator you. pitch is uh, something where, say, you get on an elevator lift and you've got 30 seconds to tell the person who you are, what you do, and, uh, and it's branding your image. And with that 30 seconds, you start off practicing two minutes. What do you, who am I? What do I do? And how effective can I be what I do? And I should be trying to pitch, which we call it mm-hmm. here, get the message across to the other person. So you start at two minutes, and then if you to try this at home with your children or yourself or somebody else, and try and clean it down to 30 seconds. Remember mm-hmm. that the first five, this is research, the first five seconds anybody meets you is the only time they really remember you, is the first five seconds. That is proven. So the first thing one should do is, is brand your image. Who are you? What do you? What kind of personality? All of that within thirty seconds. You can do it, and this is very, very helpful, and really it exercises your speech, so you don't go too long-winded with you know, or yeah, you know, that's right, you know, <laughs> and that kind of thing. But you clean it down, and you start to practice. Now, after that. There are certain skills you need to practice. And I do this, like you go to a restaurant and you say to the person you're with that, what kind of a light shade is above your head? Don't look. I've tried, I've done this quite a bit in speeches where I can do it. Is they've been looking at you for an hour in the front of the room. And you say to at the end of it in a nice way, do me a favor, turn around and face the other, the back wall. And tell me what you've been looking at besides me on the back wall of this room. They can't do it. So observation is terribly important. So I'd be able to look straight ahead. Now try moving your eyes, without moving your eyes, but try seeing on the left and right as far as you can back towards you, from behind to behind you. See if you can do it. It's difficult. But if you practice, your observation skills are scanning the room you can do, just practice it. So observation skills, and with that observation skills, 
you become more effective in communicating. Give me an example. Go to a, I used to call on doctors for, for um, pathologists, and there's something where we're not very nice people. And the one thing that you look around, you see pictures in that office of things they want to be uh, proud of. Pictures of their grandchildren, pictures of their wife, uh, pictures of their degrees. And then you break away and say, excuse me, but is, is that, that's a beautiful photograph. Uh, you know, you don't have to say your children, your grandchildren. You may ask who they are. They're beautiful. Then they tell you. And it breaks up the whole confrontational meeting very quickly. So observation skills, number one. Uh, you think about people that unfortunately are, are physically challenged, either blind or, or deaf and, you know, and mute and so on. They sharpen those skills that they have to compensate for the ones they don't have. So True. communication True. skills, number one. Number mm. two, I like what I would call, there's a number of social spaces called pros- proxemics. P-R-O-X-E-M-I-C-S, proxemics. And what it means is there are certain spaces that you have in front of you. One that's really right up close uh, where, I hope you don't have bad breath, because I'll tell you if you do, (laughs) really right up close, halitosis. Uh, um, That's called intimate space. The next one out is uh, more of a professional space, and then there's a social space. So the further you go, if you can look it up on Google, I use a lot what is called photos of. If you go to Google, photos of uh, communication skills, and you see all of these kinds of wonderful slides and uh, just really good stuff. And it's very interesting uh, in that particular, you find out how much, how much space is between these two, these areas. So there's certain spaces. And if you go to a shopping mall, uh, you will find this intimate, uh, you know, that uh, the uh, professional space and then the social spaces. So mm. th- that's another thing is in your face. So you hear the expression, get out of my face. Don't right. say that in my face. But that's mm-hmm. where they've been in- in- encroached on your close space. So Keep that in mind. So if you keep those kind of distances, you're communicating at a professional area rather than now in Europe, of course, is quite often where uh, culture customs comes in, where you're going to get a kiss on the cheek or both cheeks. Uh, or you're in Latin America, you embrace in, in, South, you know, in, the, in the Middle East. Similarly, uh, a good handshake or whatever. But they don't quite come uh, here in the United States. You don't come into that space as much as you do in other cultures. So that, so that's a not next point. I think the third thing is oral skills, the actual skills of speaking, conciseness. And it's not that easy to cut down on the nose. I, I, I think I mentioned to you earlier, but somebody asked me, how do I speak English English? And I said, it's very simple. I say, and I told in a bit of an accent. You know, you know what I'm saying, don't you? <laughs> Am I right? Am I? And you just end with, we always end with questions out of England. And I don't know whether it's a form of affirmation or habit. I, I want you to tell me, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, you're right, aren't you? So it's kind of interesting, but be concise. And that's where the elevator pitch comes into play very distinctly, is that exercise of the elevator pitch. The other areas that I, I think are very important is to be observed. Look at the space. Listen. Listen. What do us men of the uh, inferior uh, <laughs> species I always get from our uh, significant other or uh, spouse? Uh, why don't you listen to me? Did you hear what I was saying? Well, that's called slow. That's a theory, by the way. Uh, but, yes, can you just uh, repeat that? Because the, the sound just went a little bit funny. We lost a little bit okay. of connection. You said that was called, sorry? Selective listening. Selective listening. Okay, thank you. Selective listening, where you only want to hear what you want to hear, as mm. opposed to taking the... Uh, stop, don't speak. Let them speak. And you start to control the conversation. Try it at home. Try it at the office. Don't speak. Just let them say, and the, what I've started to do more and more in business is ask for just four words. Why? 
How? When? Where? It's what we call open-ended questions. It's not saying, well, you agree with me, don't you? And they're going to say, no, or yes, as opposed to when. And then they're going to come back with some spiel about what they want to do, when they're going to do it, and so on. So these are the, when you start in communication, controlling the other person in a certain way, but so friendly, nothing devious about it. I'll give you an example of putting all this into a one particular scenario, and this is very good to practice at stores. Go to a retail store, go to your Costco, what is it, the uh, Tesco or somewhere, and start talking to like the, the butcher or somebody there or something. I, but ask questions. Ask questions, because they never get asked. Well, what, what part of the cow was that? And they, they, nobody asked them that, because you say filet or porterhouse or something. Where does that come from? Maybe you know, but ask them. You get immediate good feedback because uh, you have to their knowledge and you want to know more about what they're doing. I'll give it a good example. So go to a retail store, ask some questions. Because uh, we have a store here called Brooks Brothers, and there's always somebody following me around when I go into a Brooks Brothers clothing store. Can I help you? How are you today? Why, do I look sick? <laughs> you know? <laughs> 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 uh, and I say, I'll tell you what, uh, please stop following me around. Always with a smart. Communicate always with a smart. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and you say something like, uh, I tell you what, I appreciate you trying to give me good service, and I know you will, but would you mind, I'll look around, and when I get done, I'll come over and ask you questions if I need some help or if I want to, because I know you're good at what you do. Reaffirmation of their abilities. You can have a lot of fun in a retail store with this kind of stuff. And then when you go to buy something, if it's over 50 quid or 50 pounds, then just ask for a discount. Ask for a 10% discount. And it's amazing. Nobody asks that. Well, I don't think we could do that here. Well, well can you take in the match? I just said 50 quid here. How about giving me a 10% discount? And some of the time you actually will. Try it. You might, you might get some fun out of it. So when I go to retail stores, I have a real absolute blast because I'm learning my communication skills with somebody I've never met before. I'm practicing. Now, the last one I want to give you with these skills, you know your elevator pitch, you observe very closely, you're going to speak only when you feel it's necessary, you're going to listen, you're going to say, you know, that was a very good point you made. I never thought about it that way. Could mm-hmm. you tell me more? Open-ended questions. So then, a good one is not a good, uh, interested one, is the restaurant. Ah, the restaurant. But anyhow, in the restaurant, the food is kind of mediocre. So you get over the, the server and say, I hope you don't mind me saying this, but uh, it, constructively, with a smile, constructively, this was not good, was it, Jimmy? I mean, tell me the truth. It wasn't that great, was it? You, you, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you're right. Well, um, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll take it away. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll arrange to get you a free dessert. Ah, the famous free dessert in the United States. Well, I don't eat desserts. i tell you what, just take this entree off the bill and uh, I'll just have a cup of coffee. Now, I found eight times out of ten, I will get that off the bill. Now, I'm not saying you do it just deliberately, but you're helping them. And it hurt, it's going to hurt their pocketbook by taking it off the bill, but it makes them improve. So you've got a journey here of something that should be better all the way through to the kitchen now and the manager. That works. So don't be frightened to speak up. This is part of communicating very, very well. Last but not least, if I may, I'll give you another sure. story that um, very uh, listening. Here, I'm sure like in Europe, in Japan, they put their hand over their mouth when they have the, were speaking on the cell phone. Here in the United States, you might be in line somewhere, and everybody's talking in front of you or behind you. Well, when I get there today, uh, I'd like everybody to come into the meeting, and I'm listening to this. I wonder if there's anybody really on the other end of the line, or they just want to impress people around them. But don't increase, increase encroach on my personal space. So uh, I was sitting in an airport one day. And the seats were back to back. So behind me was a, a man and a woman who were going on a, they were an older couple going on a, a cruise up into Alaska. 
and the lady said to her husband, just listen, you can help me hear them anyway. Uh, she said, uh, so we're going to get to Seattle on Friday, right? Yes. Yes, dear. And we're going to see the whales on the cruise ship on Saturday? Yes, dear. And then we're going to go on up into Alaska by Sunday and Monday. Is that correct? Yes, dear. So we get on the, the plane. Who's sitting with the man or woman? And the woman sitting next to me. And I'm not thinking, and I'm sorry, but this is just part of my, uh, my personality, what I said. You know, I'm kind of psychic. I, I feel you're going on some sort of a holiday or something. She said, yes, we are. I said, "You um, hold on. You're going on a cruise. She said, how did you know that? I said, ah, it's just the way I am. <laughs> and I said, you're going to see the whales. On. I said, I feel it. I feel whales coming through here. You're going to see whales and everything. Saturday? No, right. no, Friday. Friday. I got, uh, yeah. She said, how did, now her husband's looking over at me. And he's going white. And I think, I better get it. I better stop this. I better stop this. I said, I'm sorry. But I, I was sitting right opposite you. And I heard everything you said. She slapped me on the, on the arm and said, don't you ever do that again. But we had a wonderful conversation from then on all the way up to Seattle. So it, you don't reach a lot of people because it's important that networking today in our world is so important. So I get back to the conclusion, try these things. Try mm. it, but get your children to grow up having better use of their communicating skills. It helps with networking of communication, effectiveness, and getting on in life. Any questions, Stuart? Yeah, sure. I mean, but first, Jeff, the answers that you just shared, the information you just shared, is the, is the number one reason why I wanted you to be a guest on on this show today. Because you're you're such an educator and, uh, and and an advocate for for your for your clients, for your prospects and clients, and the tips and the the insights that you have just shared are so valuable. I, I just really want to make a point for anybody listening to Jeff right now, not to take them as lightly as Jeff put them out there because he's just so casual and laid back and it makes him sound so, you know, it's just a natural thing to do for, for him. But he really shared some vital points about communication that can help you to communicate much better which brings me to my next question Jeff I mean you just shared some excellent information on observation skills and the elevator pitch and you, know, you talked about selective listening um, I need to speak about with my partner about that there were some very good points there <laughs> and <laughs> providing some uh, feedback in restaurants however for our listeners out there could you just share what in your experience, is the most common obstacle that's actually preventing people that you work with from using those basic communication skills in their business and personal lives. Could you just expand a little bit on that for us? Because yeah, I think uh, today uh, these things are like worldwide, worldwide. There's no question about it. The dynamics of our world today has made it where it, it get up, you go on, you're all over the place, you're rushing around, you, and you suddenly abbreviate everything and mm. just stop more. Stop, 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 stop. Get off the train. <laughs> you know, calm down. And I think it relates to the stress we're under sometimes, a lot more stress, over-medicated. This also is a great help in effective, healthy human being can be much better with these basic good relearning some basic skills that when we were children, I mean, I remember going to private school in Southampton and, uh, boy, you, you better be, uh, in, on your best behavior in class. Otherwise <laughs> you learned uh, quite a lot of really important skills that mm -hmm. maybe we've forgotten. I remember, a, a, a one boy class and the teacher who had a vicious temper said, Who's, who, did, who said that? And nobody was out own up. We've all had that probably that experience in, in school. And sure. she said, okay, everybody write 5,000 lines. I must not speak in class. <laughs> so you kind of learn some of these basic core skills of when to speak and not to speak. I remember the expression, uh, son, you, you speak when you're, when you're looking to or something like that. But I, I'm yeah. not sure there's really, there's a good example 
how our world has changed today. Now, I'm saying stop and listen, yes. But, you know, you can always go up to somebody in an elevator and pitch. Very nice to meet you. And I use a different word. It's an absolute pleasure to meet you. Just that word. Absolute. Just some selected pictorial words are mm. so important that we've got them. Hi, how are you here? That's you. Or in, in Brazil, they say, tudo bem, tudo bom. Hi, doing okay? Yep, doing okay. That's it. Tudo bom, tudo bem. Uh, <laughs> and mm. uh, one last thing, I will, because there's so many things to look. I mentioned earlier about when you go out with people, uh, and you walk into a restaurant and you sit down. Can you remember who was in number three booth or table? <laughs> what, do, what did they have on? How many men were there? How many women? What was, and you'd be surprised. We don't know. So I'll give you another example. So that immediately try that game. Go back to the table and say, hey, who's, who's three, three booths over there? <laughs> yeah, but Jeff, suppose that our listeners actually, you know, take, take that on board, that one particular example. Yeah. They take that on board and they, they're out, yeah. they're socializing and they're in restaurants and they, yeah. they do the observation skills that you, that you mentioned earlier on about yeah. looking above your head, et cetera. How does that translate over into their business life? Let's say for business owners, because it's mostly uh, yeah. business owners that are going to be listening yeah. to the program. It, how does it translate over in terms of benefiting yeah. them in their businesses? Exactly. It sharpens your skills so that when you're in front of somebody, you will notice something I haven't mentioned yet is physical observation skills. How do they move their arms? Do they smile? Look in their eyes. Both saying in your uh, your intimate space, look look at them, and you find that the, the observant skills you've been practicing in restaurants and so on. When you look at somebody, you can sense their reactions much better by their their movements, their their way of positioning. Uh, you can almost tell if they slouch in a chair, are they lazy, or what, tired, or what's going on. Uh, it, it it just sharpens those skills. So in business, you can be much more effective knowing who's who you who the person is in front of you are they reacting to what you're saying or vice versa and so this is very important in my opinion of uh, practicing those skills so when you're on the business meeting or so on you have a better sense of how to approach negotiating than you did before there's no question about that it, it's mm. it's mind-boggling the changes you will see you may not notice you've made some changes but you will and it becomes a natural thing I've got a couple more questions before we leave. And one of the questions that I have for you, Jeff, is suppose that I'm a business owner because I'm speaking on behalf of the listeners. And I'm a business owner and I've listened to your interview and you've said such amazing insights with us. However, I'm the kind of person who who uses all of this, the slang and you know and you like and you know, all these shortcuts and the laugh out loud in my emails, but I'm using this in the business environment and the product or service that I provide is actually a really good one. In fact, I'm the best one in my market, but the way that I'm communicating verbally and in um, the written my written skills doesn't reflect the product and service that I provide, just how much damage could that cause for me? Well, first of all, the, the person obviously recognizes that he has issues or she has issues with writing and verbal communication skills. Am I right? Yes. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yes. What I just said to you was I had you reaffirm what you said, and this is a very good technique. So I'm right in thinking that what you said is if you time Perfect. to think. Am I right in thinking what you just said is, would you mind repeating what you just said? Two great phrases. Anyhow, well, first of all, you recognize that he recognizes it. Do you get somebody else to do it? Or would you like somebody else to read over your work and say, make improvements? I would have somebody work with them because it's damaging if you, as the owner, do not truly reflect the quality of the company. And I think this is where writing skills, uh, in particular in emails, is very, very important uh, that you you do complete sentences. You make sure you review your work before you send it, spelling, grammar, 
you look at punctuation here in the United States is is and I don't mind saying it, it's pretty bad. People are rushed. It's not necessarily they don't know. They they're rushed and they don't read over their work. And so my feeling would be on that one is I would uh, verbalize it to somebody else, maybe, or have my somebody else do it, but get involved in correcting some of those habits. You know, so but I think that is terribly important, uh, what you've just said, that you've got, got to get help. You've got to have help. Jeff, you shared so much good information with us today, and I, I noticed we could sit here and talk for another two hours, but unfortunately, time does not permit us to do that. But it doesn't stop us jumping on another call and ex- maybe expanding on this topic or de- delving into another topic which you specialize in. So that's something that we can discuss after the show. But to wrap things up, Jeff, you just spoke about people getting help. So... If there are any listeners out there who are ready to improve their basic communication skills so that they can shine in a business environment and be more approachable, be more, be much a better communicator in their personal lives, how can they connect with you? How do they get hold of you, Jeff? Yeah, uh, it would be my pleasure. Uh, uh, number one, uh, I think it would be, and I, I don't mind saying it, it would be lovely to come over because I believe in UK there, there are companies that have these, need to be re- reaffirmation of these skill sets. So I'm available uh, for speaking or whatever engagements. Number two, uh, your listeners today, be in the US or anywhere in the world, and uh, uh, very happy and honored to be with you and to get invited by you, Stuart, uh, would be to contact me at the U.S. phone, which is 813-766-0858, U.S. code 813-766-0858, or my personal email, which I prefer, is Jeff, J-E, F for Frank, F for Frank, K for Kilo, R for Robert, T for Tommy, G for George at AOL.com. Jeff K R T G at AOL.com or Skype is Jeff K R T G. And I'd be very happy to answer any questions or if people want or companies want help. That's what we're here for. That's what my company does. And uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. I think uh, b- bouncing off of this, Stuart, keep it simple. Ask. And practice. And all of those out here, I want to, for you to get feedback to show them myself. Did you try them? Were you successful? If not, go back again. Try them. Try them with your friend. If you've got trouble writing or speaking, do it with a friend. Some people do it with a spouse or significant other. You don't talk to me like that anymore. What's that? So, yeah, open up a bit. Uh, it reminds us of marriage marriages, too. <laughs> so, with that, I've really, really enjoyed this. I really have, and I hope I've been useful for everybody out there. And I look forward to hearing from you. And Stuart, once again, thank you so much. It's been an honor and a privilege. And I look forward to talking to you soon. Take care. Thank you so much, Jeff. You've been (laughs) an absolute gem, as we say here in the UK. Our listeners are going to get a lot of value from this interview. I will ensure that all of your contact details are on the website, and I will definitely 100% have you back for another show. So with that said, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This has been another show with yours truly, Stuart Andrew Alexander. I wish you a good day, all the best, and take care out there. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to Impact Makers Radio. To listen to all past, present, and future industry thought leaders and trendsetters, visit us at impactmakersradio.com.